Thank you very much. As you conclude, it seems that uh, a lot of things are going on uh, on parallel in this uh, area of uh, combining the scattered challenges and the academic uh, side. So thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Shukla. And uh, our uh, next speaker going to be Professor Don Song. Uh, Don Song is a professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at UC Berkeley. Her research interest lies in deep learning and security. Uh, she, she has studied diverse security and privacy issues in computer, in computer systems and networks, including areas ranging from software security, networking security, applied cryptography, to the intersection of machine learning and security. Professor Song, it's our pleasure to have you here. Thanks for being here. Hey, my name is Dong Song. I'm a professor at UC Berkeley. So today I'll talk about one of our projects on secure and privacy preserving data analytics and machine learning. Uh, I, uh, so uh, my group uh, does a lot of uh, different work in the area of, uh, at the intersection between AI and security. And today I only have time to talk about one of the projects. And tomorrow I'm also giving a talk at the AI uh, conference on some of our other work including adversary uh, deep learning and uh, some other topics at the intersection between AI and security. OK, so um, uh, this work is a joint work with uh, my students, Noah Johnson Jr. and uh, collaborators uh, uh, Joe Hallestein. So what's the problem that we are trying to solve here? Um, one of the really big problems at, uh, in the uh, big data and also machine learning is that today we have a huge amount of data, but a lot of this data is sensitive. And because of this, a lot of the value is actually being locked in uh, because people don't have uh, secure and privacy preserving ways to analyze this, uh, this data. As a consequence, the value of this big data is now being utilized. So the question is, uh, how can we do this? Um, right, so again, this is a more detailed problem overview is that here uh, we have valuable data that's being siloed and underutilized for security and privacy concerns. Uh, we could be getting a lot of business uh, intelligence uh, insights from the data, and also even for security applications. But on the other hand, if we don't do this well with the security and privacy, then we, uh, privacy breaches and data exfiltration, all these can be issues. Um, right. And as we all know, security and privacy risks are real. And there are lots of severe consequences for data breaches. And uh, there are, again, lots of real world incidents for data breaches. So then the question is, what can we do? What kind of solutions can we offer? So one solution people have proposed in the past is anonymization. Unfortunately, as we know, that anonymization is ineffective. So for example, there has been <coughs> um, real world uh, examples, for example, with the Netflix uh, uh, data a data set where Netflix re, uh, released some of their anonymized uh, movie review data, and also with this uh, New York City taxi data where anonymized uh, taxi trip data has been re uh, released. But again, in both cases, um, researchers have shown that you can combine the released anonymized data with other public data to de-anonymize users. And hence, anonymization is not uh, a sufficient solution. And another solution that people typically use is, for example, access control. But however, all these existing so solutions, they are insufficient. So for example, for access control, it's an um, all or nothing approach. So either you don't get access to the data at all, then in this case, you just cannot use the data at all. Or if you give access, for example, to some employees or to some analysts, then that person has all the access to the data, including seeing the raw data. And then in this case, you can have insider attacks, or the person's account may be compromised. Then again, this um, then does not provide any protection to the sensitive data. 
And also, as we mentioned, for anonymization, one is that it provides insufficient protection, and also once you anonymize the data, also the value of the data has been decreased. Oftentimes, you can destroy data utility. So then the question is, again, what can we do? How can we solve the problem mm. better? <laughs> so in our project called Allegro, we propose a three-in-one solution for secure and privacy-preserving data, um, uh, data analytics. So in particular, we have three uh, components in Allegro. Privacy preserving general data analytics, we uh, support general analytics, but at the same time um, provides uh, priv privacy protection. And privacy preserving machine learning, where we support machine learning, again, with the protection of privacy. And also we enable fine-grained access control and auditing capabilities. So in this talk, I won't have time to go into everything. And also some of the work is still a work in progress. I will mainly focus on the first aspect, privacy preserving data analytics. And one important usage scenario uh, for our project Allegro is that we want to be able to deploy the system in a very easy way so that um, you don't need to change the existing workflow and also you don't need to change the existing, for example, backend data store and so on. So in particular, what we do is that uh, the analysts will still use, uh, do their typical workflow where they um, <coughs> write their analytics program, for example, to uh, post their queries. <coughs> and uh, let's say we have some security and privacy policies that we want to enforce. So in general, what Allegro does is that Allegro actually will transform the original analytics program into a secure version of the analytics program. And I'll talk about this uh, in a second. Uh, in more detail, um, Allegro in this case uses a uh, rewriting approach that rewrites the original analytics program um, into a secure version of the analytics program that is guaranteed to satisfy the security and privacy policies. And now the secure analytics program can then be run on the existing data store in the backend uh, data store or database, uh, uh, RER big data compute uh, framework. And in this case, again, you don't need to change the analyst uh, uh, workflow, and also you don't need to change the backend system. And now, the backend system, uh, when executing the secure analytics program, will then compute, will automatically generate uh, secure and privacy preserving program results and send back to the analyst. As you can see here, the advantage of Allegro is that one, uh, it is still enables the analyst to do his or her job meaning it can still analyze the data and extract the value out of the data. But on the other hand, Allegro in this case can ensure the security and privacy policies. And also Allegro is designed to support a variety of different types of security and privacy policies. We have built in some built-in security and privacy policies, including, for example, uh, differential privacy. And also there's another aspect that I won't have time to talk about, uh, can enable uh, SGX secured analytics as well, uh, and also other policies. And uh, you can, the, uh, the users can also support uh, um, custom policies via a rich policy language. So with this approach, Allegro achieves a number of uh, um, uh, advantages. Uh, one is that this actually pro provides formal security guarantees and also is compatible with any standard database data store and supports general data analytics and machine learning and also the, uh, in this approach it's transparent to the analyst. So the analyst doesn't even need to know about how to do secure and privacy preserving you know, analytics and machine learning. The system actually does it for the analyst. So again, in this talk, due to limited time, I will just focus on one aspect of the system, uh, how we actually uh, enforce differential privacy as a security and privacy policy. So just a few words about the differential privacy very quickly. Uh, differential privacy essentially is a notion, it's a very powerful notion for um, providing privacy uh, for these uh, data analytics. And in, uh, in a sense, it provides a formal guarantee of uh, distinguishability. In particular, in this case, we, um, uh, we want to compute uh, a differentially private query F, 
And we see that the, uh, the, uh, this computation f is differentially private uh, if f satisfies the following property. Um, so in this case, we consider one uh, data set, uh, the original data set, and another data set which is uh, called a neighboring data set of the original data set, which only just uh, differs by one data point to the original data set, meaning either one data point is added or removed or changed. And we say the computation F satisfies the differential privacy and if the computation result of F from these two data sets, the original data set and the neighboring data sets, are almost the same, meaning you almost cannot distinguish the results, the two results. And this is a notion of differential privacy. And in this case, uh, what is, uh, the differential privacy says is that essentially uh, because the computation F cannot distinguish between these two data sets, the original data set and the neighboring data set, then um, in this case, they, uh, and hence you can see that the user's privacy is being protected because the computation itself cannot even distinguish the two cases. And there has been growing interest from industry on differential privacy. For example, both Google and Apple have recently released uh, they uh, deployed uh, differential privacy in a certain parts of their uh, products, including um, for Google, it's the, uh, the browser site collecting information uh, from users, and uh, for Apple, it's the smart, uh, it's, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, keyboard usage. So then, the, uh, so differential privacy is a very strong notion and gives you a theoretical guarantee about uh, preserving users' privacy. Then the question is, how can we achieve differential privacy? And there has been different privacy mechanisms proposed. Essentially, uh, uh, one approach is to add random noise to the query results uh, that is scaled to what's called the, the query sensitivity. And again, I won't have time to go into the details how the sensitivity is actually <coughs> computed. So the main challenge is how can we actually um, enable differential privacy in practice in the real world. Even though I mentioned uh, Google and Apple have deployed differential privacy in their products, but these are actually unfortunately one of uh, two of the very rare cases where differential privacy has been used in practice, and also in both cases have been used in very narrow parts of the products. So and there has been a lot of work done in differential privacy, but unfortunately most of them is uh, theoretical in nature and has only been evaluated on very small scale and synthetic data sets. And um, the question is how can we actually take the next step to actually enable differential privacy in practice? And in particular, the current approaches are not, uh, for differential privacy are not designed to support real world requirements including performance, scalability, compatibility with existing data systems, uh, as well as flexible access for, the, uh, for analysts. And again, this is a table of uh, different uh, general purpose differential privacy mechanisms, including the, the, the bottom row is a new differential privacy mechanism that we, uh, we have proposed called uh, elastic sensitivity. So each of these mechanisms has its own unique strength and limitations, and they may be uh, particularly suited for different types of analytics, data analytics <coughs> queries. And most of these actually do not, uh, um, are, not in, uh, are not compatible with the existing databases. So our goal is that we want to actually be able to support a general purpose differential privacy mechanisms, again, in a way that's very, make it very easy to deploy and very easy to use. Unfortunately, with the previous approaches, if you want to use these different uh, differential privacy mechanisms, you actually would have to go through a lot in terms of, you have to change the existing database and data stores, and uh, you actually often have to have replicated the databases to be able to use these different mechanisms. And this is very, uh, this is not practical. So all this, uh, the limitations of the current approaches motivated us to um, propose a new solution uh, called intrinsically private queries. And we enable this intrinsic private queries through our uh, query rewriting, our program rewriting approach. In particular, an intrinsic private query 
as a query which already has a privacy mechanism built in, and hence the query itself automatically enforces the differential privacy guarantees on its results. And this is the, uh, the notion uh, the, uh, of uh, the, uh, the concept of in, uh, intrinsically private query. And the advantage of uh, differentially, uh, intrinsically private query is that one, again, it does not require custom runtime or database modifications. And also, it's a very flexible mechanism can, in, can support all existing uh, differential privacy mechanisms. <laughs> and I, uh, and again, as I mentioned, this intrinsically private query is enabled through our, private, uh, our query writing mechanism. And uh, I won't go into the detail. Here's one example showing how our el elastic sensitivity mechanism uh, can, be, uh, can be supported using a query writing mechanism that rewrites the original query on the left into the right-hand side, which actually enables the elastic sensitivity uh, privacy mechanism. Uh, which supports different aspects, including uh, sampling, uh, different, uh, different sampling mechanisms, and, uh, and also adding the noise perturbation. So again, compared to the previous approaches, where in order to deploy these uh, privacy mechanisms, you would have to change the, uh, the backend databases, you would have to replicate uh, the data store to support different mechanisms. With our approach, uh, we, uh, through this query rewriting, again, uh, it's very easy to deploy uh, these uh, different differential privacy mechanisms. The uh, analysts only need to just uh, write the original query uh, as before. Again, the analyst in this case doesn't even need to know about differential privacy at all. And our Allegro system will then automatically uh, translate the, uh, rewrite the query into this intrinsically private query. And then this intrinsically private query gets executed on the original database. Again, the original database doesn't need to be changed at all. And the, uh, this execution will then provide differentially um, private results automatically. And again, the uh, advantage of this approach is that we can, using this, uh, this approach, we can support any standard backend database engines. And we provide unified support for a wide variety of differential privacy mechanisms, and this can very easily integrate with existing data pipelines. And uh, inside the Allegro system, in order to uh, support this automatic query writing to enable intrinsically private queries, we have to uh, essentially develop a number of different components. We need to be able to automatically analyze the original query to, um, using our analysis engine so that we can actually and analyze the sensitivity of the original query and to figure out um, essentially how much noise to add, or how much perturbation to add to the final results. And also we have a, a system for privacy mechanism uh, selection where the, uh, it actually uses a machine learning model to figure out, because for different queries you may need different privacy mechanisms that can be uh, best suited for this a particular query, then uh, this machine learning model from the, uh, the features from the original query will then figure out which privacy mechanism is the best and then select that mechanism. And then we have a transformation engine that uh, will then, uh, uh, and then transform the original query into uh, the intrinsically private query uh, using the particular privacy m mechanism that's being selected. Okay. So uh, we've uh, built a system and uh, have done uh, experiments. And in particular, in this case, uh, we actually have a collaboration with Uber, where we actually, for the first time, we actually analyzed uh, millions of queries and analyzed the utility of our mechanism over huge, uh, very high number of queries. I won't go into the details, but the results show that um, uh, with our approach, uh, for, uh, for a majority of the queries in the real world, we can actually provide very good utilities and also at the same time provide uh, uh, privacy protection. Um, and our mechanism selection can select the, the best query, uh, the best privacy mechanism for the query. 
And to, to summarize, then so far I've only talked about the differentially private uh, query, uh, analytics queries, but also we use a similar approach for differentially private machine learning, and some of this work is still uh, also working in progress. And similarly, we use a similar rewriting approach to enable fine-grained access control and auditing. And again, as I mentioned, so some of this work is actually being piloted at Uber. And for the first time, actually enabling differentially private queries on real world, uh, uh, real world queries. Um, yeah. Okay. So to right again to summarize, uh, we hope that using the system we can enable a secure and privacy-preserving uh, data analytics and machine learning to unlock the value of big data while eliminating the risk of data and privacy breaches. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>